Let's talk inverse operations. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. I'm an assistant principal in Southwest Sydney, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here today. You'll notice that I often read from my notebook which I'm going to do today. Uh, before we get into it though, I'm just going to remind everyone, as usual, all the links and everything are in the description below. I do have some resources to share with you guys and an additional video, and hopefully that will be helpful for you today. So when, uh, this is just an overall thing. So this is, hasn't come up to me through any um, explicit experience, I suppose. It's just been over time that I've noticed that this topic, this content kind of comes up in a tricky way and in general, I've noticed in maths that kids often don't jump to the why question. They jump to the why question a lot in other subjects. Why is the sky blue? You know, why do we have to use an adjective in this particular way? But when it comes to maths, all they want to know is how. How do I get the answer? That seems to be the instinctive question that they want to ask is how do I do that? That's not a bad thing. It's always good to know how to do something. But really, that's preventing them, well not preventing them, it hinders them from getting the why part and the why is so much more important than the how because that's where you can apply those problem solving skills in other areas. So I find that because they're not asking why it inhibits that development and it can create barriers to further development in mathematical concepts. Um, if any of you have seen my other channel which is called Clever Pickles uh, you'll see that a lot of what I do in my conversation and my dialogue in introducing some of those games that we play really result it goes around why I try and put that into that and I try and do my um, out loud thinking in terms of mathematical concepts so that they can see me role modeling that and I think that needs to happen in our classrooms on a regular basis not that it isn't I'm just saying that, you know, we need to sometimes be consciously aware of the things that we're doing that may involuntarily create a barrier to what kids are learning. And this can happen sometimes in inverse operations. So just looking at my notes, I wrote tons of notes on this because this was something that it can get really deep, <laughs> this particular concept, depending on where you're going to go with it. So I, I, I want to make sure that when we're looking at inverse operations, we're not just going straight to the operation part. I want to go to what inverse means and it, it come from the word invert which you know we can apply in so many different areas I'm going to show you some examples as well so the reason that I, I think it's important though that they really comprehend what inverse means not just so they can understand inverse operations but because there's further things in our content in our curriculum that always drive back to or link back to um, understanding what inverse means um, for example, in stage three at the moment, we were working on order of operations. So if they don't have that, that deep understanding of what inverse operations is, then they're not going to be able to leap into order of operations very well either because of those relationships that exist in those operations. Um, and even further down the line, um, I watched a video recently from Eddie Wu, which I'll link into this as well. He's talking about inverse functions. This is stage six content and they're still talking about inverse operations so that they can move into inverse functions. Um, it's a really good video as well. And I mean, you don't need to be a mathematician or anything to understand it, but it's a really good way for us as primary teachers. If you're a primary teacher watching, if you're secondary, hi, thanks for joining me. Um, if if you want to see where our kids go, I believe it's absolutely vital that we pay attention to that content stage four and beyond. We need to know what further mountains our kids are going to be climbing and why we need to build those really significant key concepts and experiences in mathematics so that they don't feel like they have to climb a huge mountain every time they come to something new. They have those building blocks to be able to successfully engage in that content. So when we're defining inverse, operations um, any video if you if you type in inverse operations for kids and bring up YouTube there's not much Aussie content on there unfortunately but every video will define it as the opposite so addition is opposite to subtraction multiplication is opposite to division um, and do you notice that all of those videos and us as well ourselves and even in even in our syllabus it says addition and subtraction addition always comes first multiplication and division multiplication always comes first and I, I make a conscious effort to make sure that I don't do that in my classroom I will say subtraction and addition division and multiplication 
I'll do it vice versa as well. I want to get that balance in there because I feel like our dialogue is putting in an involuntary emphasis onto those um, first things that we say. So addition is more important than subtraction. Multiplication is more important than division. Or And, and that seems to be the way that kids jump onto it as well. It's they always pick up addition before subtraction. They always pick up multiplication before division. In their heads, they think subtraction and division is harder than addition and multiplication, when really it shouldn't be because they go hand in hand. They're inverse operations. <laughs> so when, when you're having those conversations in the classroom, um, I like to tie them in using colors. I know sometimes people have four different colors for those four different operations. I'll have one color for addition and subtraction, one color for multiplication and division. I want them to recognize that they're linked, they're together. So uh, when we describe these operations, I, I want to get rid of that invisible separation that we're creating between them. They are different things, absolutely, and we want our kids to know that. But I don't want them to think that addition is over here and it's se completely separate to subtraction that's over there because they're always linked. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want them to visualize it that way either. And I don't want us to push those concepts further away when eventually we're going to be linking them together. Um, so to begin to develop that deep understanding of um, inverse operations and just that what that understanding of inverse is, I think it's important to really help the kids understand what it means in context. So defining it, this is a language lesson here. Um, you, I, th I think the word is more important at that, that first exposure that kids have to it than anything else. So, I mean, if you go to, I went to Google because I wanted to get these definitions for you. The first thing that comes up says something that is opposite or reverse of something. Remember reverse. Um, the second definition was opposite or contrary in position, direction, order, or effect. Those words are important and this is language that we need to be using with the kids. Then there's like two different mathematical um, definitions that go with it. So it said a reciprocal quantity, mathematical expression, geometric figure, etc., which is the result of inversion. And the second one was an element which, when combined with a given element in an operation, produces the identity element for that operation. So if you're in stage one-ish sort of area, those cu first couple of definitions is what you want to jump onto because that's the language our kids will be able to connect with uh, on a, and have a better understanding of. Um, depending on your kids, how high you go with those definitions. So I think it's important to start with a discussion around the meaning of inversion. What does it mean to invert? What does it mean to be inverse? Um, and you can create, you know, some synonyms to go with those things. So for, for addition, um, you know, for subtraction, you know, make that word wall and have that bank of keywords up there. And if you're like me, you like those visual links as well, whether it's images or colors to be able to connect those things together. Now, if I look, sorry, I'm just going to my other laptop on the side here. If you go to the syllabus and I'm talking New South Wales here, I'm in the New South Wales system. So that's the syllabus I'm referring to. You don't see the word inverse until you hit stage one, uh, content two uh, in addition and subtraction. It doesn't touch on multiplication and division. We're not using that language at that point. So some schools I know use content one for year one and content two for year two. But if you're in a school that does composites, you're covering it across the board. And if you've got any GNT classes as well, you shouldn't be going up through those high stages. You should be going deeper into those concepts. So chances are you could be hitting that content two faster than with some of the other students. That's when that language first appears. Addi subtraction and addition. Then when you hit stage two, that it's in content one. It's meant to be following on and extending those kids on what they've been learning, been have been learning already. And again, addition and subtraction is where you go first because you know our kids should have that good understanding of what it means there before they start delving into multiplication and division. Slightly harder concepts for our kids. And if they're not gonna get it in addition and subtraction, they're going to find it harder when they hit multiplication and division. Not necessarily, but generally. Um, so those areas that you're going to find it, you're going to find those words, inverse operations, in addition and subtraction, in multiplication and division, and in patterns and algebra. And you will find it in um, multiplication content one and two for stage two. It gets heavier 
in stage two when you get to multiplication and division. When you get to stage three, you'll get it in content one for sub addition and subtraction, and it's going to extend from there. And like I said, this is going to be revisited as they go through stage four, stage five, stage six, up to extension. So this, this is not going away, this concept. It's not something we can touch on. We need to make sure that our kids have got a really deep understanding of what's going on. So I've got some example activities um, to show you around building that deep understanding of what it means to be inverse. And one is using paint. So I'm going to switch the camera around now so you can see this really quick activity that the kids can do using paint. So when I say paint, I'm talking about on the computer. So I just open up a new paint and it's pretty good if you can get this to be about a square, which mine isn't quite, that's almost better as a square. If you can hit the rectangle tool and just make sure you've got color and fill as black, try and get it about halfway. Make yourself half black, half white. And then what you're gonna do is click select all. So the whole, whole object is selected as if it was one thing. Right click and then down here you've got invert color. Inverted. It's been inverted now. It is now on the other side. It hasn't separated from it. It hasn't gone to another dimension or anything like that. It's not separate from it. It's still connected. And I can invert it back the other way if I want to. Another cool way that you can um, see this separately is if I click on my select icon and select, you know, about a squarish sort of shape within it. And in here, I'm going to right click and click invert color and it inverts it this way as well. So you can see it didn't go anywhere, it didn't separate, it's still attached to it, doesn't matter if it's big or small, all it did was inverted. It changed direction, it changed position. This is a good way for the kids to see it. Now I'm just gonna click on a new one here. Uh, no, I don't want to save it. And I'm just gonna go to a picture that I pulled up here before. Uh, just a black and white flower. This is always good to do it in black and white when you're starting to get that idea. I'm going to go back to paint and I'm going to click paste. There it is there. And I'm going to crop it just so it's a bit smaller there. And same thing. I'm going to select all. I've selected the whole thing. I'm going to right click and invert color. That's really cool. And it's like I said, it hasn't moved um, away anywhere, the colors have inverted and changed that position. And this is a fun activity to do with different colors and everything, but it's just really clear if you can do it in black and white. That's a good way to tie in technology with a maths lesson. Uh, and it's, it's really engaging. When you see the kids' reaction to watching the colors when they invert, it's pretty cool. And you can display them around the classroom. It can be part of your word wall. The kids can describe it. They can use this in their literacy lessons as well and do some writing around it, looking up definitions, describing these different things in sentences, um, and just, just really linking what we're doing with our language and what we apply in mathematics. Um, another activity that I like to do, and this is the language that I use with my younger kids, kids when it comes to inverse operations, is that they're BFFs. They're best friends forever. Um, imagine that they are linked in arms because they're best friends and they like skipping around everywhere. And sometimes one's on the left and sometimes one's on the right. They can change sides, but they've always got their arms linked and they're always BFFs. Addition and subtraction of BFFs, multiplication and division of BFFs. And a fun activity that you can do with them is actually get the kids to get a post-it note stick it on, one's addition, one's subtraction, they're a partner, and then you get another set of partners, it's multiplication and division, and they can go for a skip around together. And you know what? Let's change arms. And if you do um, the chicken dance with this, you know, they can change sides and stuff like that. And you'll see that just because I'm multiplication doesn't mean I'm always on the left or I'm always on the right. We can change sides, but we're still BFFs. Not something you'd probably do with secondary. Yeah, your kids, you decide. <laughs> um, and then if you want to go out, you know, move it up a notch, you'd actually start putting those questions on them, those inverse operations and seeing who their BFF is. So you'll have those in inverse operations written out on post-it notes already. Stick them on different kids around the classroom and see who can find their BFF. Who's got my inverse operation? Um, and then they'll start to get that connection visually of you know that link that's always there even though you're on the other side of the room I'm still your I'm still your inverse operation and then they'll get them together and this is the kind of thing that eventually when they start doing it on paper 
they've got that automaticity in there because they've built that connection, they've built that understanding. Um, another activity I like to do is the mirror questions and I'll draw like a line down the board um, that's that's the mirror and sometimes it's good to put like a picture of a mirror to remind them and you need to specifically have the mirror questions to do this. So on one side you'll have you know two times three equals six and then on the other side on it other side of the board sorry you'll have um, six divided by three equals two and you'll talk about the fact that it's a mirror look at that what's different the operation is different you know which one goes with which and you can do it um, you know in various ways that suits your kids it doesn't really matter whether it's a high number or a low number just that they're getting that visual concept of um, that inverse operation eventually these tools get taken away from them when they build that understanding um, so you're not going to have that every single time and this is a tool that you don't need to just use on on our younger kids you know if our older kids need it then they need it give them that tool to learn with I need glasses to read with this is never going away some kids might always need that tool but you know if we can build them up to that point where they're doing it naturally that's what we want and then eventually you go from there and you can give them those generated questions. They can generate their own questions. They can peer feedback with each other and try and test each other on what their inverse operations are. You can use it with dice. Roll dice and tell me what the inverse operation is. And sometimes if you've got the dice there, you can move them around. Now I've got some uh, pictures and anchor charts to show you um, that I'm going to share in the Google Drive with you guys. So I'm just going to flip the camera one more time. So I'm going to link you to this uh, in my Google Drive and these are just lots of posters and things that you can use to help support your kids. So here's some visuals about what inverse operations mean. I like this because it's very clear. See the colour connection right there? And I like this one because it visualises what it actually means in terms of part, part, whole. So when you're looking at addition and subtraction, here's your whole, there's the parts. And in um, division and multiplication, there's your whole and there are your parts. Uh, another visual here and um, I like the fact that they've got the arrows pointing to it and the visuals as well as the algorithm. I think that's really important to be able to visually see those things. You know, I'm a visual person. This one's quite basic. There's the operation, that's its inverse. There's the operation, that's its inverse. This is getting up into our higher levels of mathematics. Here's an example. I like this because you can see the visual. Let me just get a bit close there for you. You can see it there. This is a good activity. You can um, cut out the inverse operations and there's a blank one here for them to stick them onto. Just a basic activity, that one. Just a visual prompt, this one. 1 plus 9 is 10. 9 plus 1 is 10. How about that? Doesn't matter, it's still 10. And then the inverse operation with subtraction. Here's an example of what it looks like and you've got the colours there to match it. I like this one because it just gives you the numerals there and it shows you with the color coding to where they lay when it's um, in those different operations. This one's good, addition, subtraction, backwards, forwards, and it's got it written out there. Same thing, multiplication, division, backwards, forwards, and it's written out there. Basic display prompt. Here's another one here with the dice. So this is what I like as well because the kids could physically draw it if you want to instead of using the numerals. If this is what tool they need, to be able to visualize it and understand it, go for it. Same with counters. Oh, I've got too many pages on there. I'll fix that up before I put that up for you guys. So I'm going to wrap it up there though. Just a reminder that, you know, this is not the set way you need to teach inverse operations. These are things that just work for me in my classroom with my kids. I just know that that language that goes with it, especially for our EALD kids, if they don't get that understanding of what inverse actually means, they're going to think that something is completely separate to another. You know, we teach hot and cold. It's still water, but it's hot and cold. And quite often they see those things as separate. And when it comes to inverse operations, they need to see that there's a link, not that they're completely detached from each other, even though they might be opposite. So if you can build that language with them first and get that understanding, get those ties, those uh, connections to that concept, I think they'll get it much, much better. And then down the line, they'll be able to do those other things that have linked in with it as well. So I'll leave it there. I'm going to put my subscription button down the bottom here. So if you haven't subscribed, you just hover over that and click the subscription button. I'm going to put my shikaku puzzle uh, up the top there because if you want something really fun to do with maths, that's definitely one to do. Thanks guys. Bye.